Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Pantium DL1000. You'll see this with a million different names. The Canon with two ends, TC8000, the Nokina, Olympia, you never know. Um, apparently these first appeared about 1981. It was made by New Taiwan Corp. Some were imported by and labeled uh, Levesque. Usually the names were similar to real can uh, to real cameras. You know, Olympia Canon with two ends. Every now and then they cross the line, though. I've seen pictures of this Canon with one end, uh, Rikonon. Uh, these have even been labeled as Sony before. It's a trash cam. If you hadn't already figured that out. Um, it has a fixed shutter probably about 1 125th of a second. I haven't timed this one. Uh, some have an adjustable aperture with this ring right here. This one is either fake, glued, or broken. At any rate it's fixed at f16. I also didn't verify that. Who knows. Uh, if this was adjustable like some of them are. goes from f6.3 uh, setting for f8, f11, and f16. It has for its made in Japan lens a curved film plane and the pressure plate is curved as well. Um, it's normally motor wind and rewind. This one is broken but you can see here the motor is actually attached to this and the whole thing rotates but it doesn't really have anything to catch the cogs uh, it doesn't have cogs to catch the sprocket holes and it doesn't have a pressure roller here so apparently even the ones that work don't work very well this mess on the front is pretty much for show um, this whole thing that looks like a lens. The lens and the aperture are way down inside there. So all of this is just to make it look like something. Another interesting thing, there aren't any gears from the motor to the, uh, to the cassette holder here. And there's not another motor. So apparently, if you have one that works, it's designed to just push the film back into the canister. Don't know how well that might work. One of the reasons this one didn't work, the battery chamber here, and it takes two AA batteries, the negative connector from the chamber, if they're wired in series for three volts, comes up and there's a little circuit board here it wasn't soldered to the board. It's not just a battered solder joint. There was no sign of solder on that at all. So apparently quality control on these guys, as you might expect, is not great. They didn't actually test it, just checked in the box and away it went. I did uh, test the motor. The motor itself works. You feed it three volts and it whirs just fine. I did get a pretty complete kit for this. It's kind of funny. I got this uh, big flash holder thing uh, with this remote connection. It does have a hot shoe. According to the manual, which I also got, this is a Model C because in addition to the regular viewfinder, it has this waist level viewfinder. It's not as horrible as you might expect. It's kind of funny. The regular viewfinder it has frame lines, which it's way over here um, compared to where the lens is. It's just a piece of plastic glued in there. So I'm sure the frame lines are really no more useful than the actual square outline of what you look through. It also has a little dot in the middle, I guess to make you think that it has a meter or something. Model A, according to the manual, uh, has a built-in flash and the Model B just has a hot shoe up here. For this one, because they had to make this piece taller for the uh, 
for the TLR type viewfinder, the little disc on top of the uh, film counter has a piece of foam to lift it up and the rewind switch has a piece of plastic that actually goes down and grabs the switch that's connected to the circuit board if you have the model A or B which isn't quite as tall. It's kind of funny. Um, came with a lens cap. A couple other interesting things which I don't know if they work because the film transport doesn't work. It's got a little window with a whirly gig so you can see that the film is advancing and connected to a tiny little daughter board. This is actually an LED. I have no idea what it's supposed to do other than maybe look cool. Um, that also doesn't work but I have not bothered to reverse engineer that. One interesting thing, the self-timer does actually work. No idea how long it's good for. But if the manual doesn't mention that either. The flash, I haven't done the calculation for the guide number. We all run some quick math when I'm editing this, put it together. It does have a chart up here with film speeds and distances and aperture. Not that you can adjust it. And the funny thing is, the flash works and works well. It has this remote cord. Um, and it even has on the back of it, it's not an LED, it's a button, so you can actually test the flash. I almost forgot while I had it open, wouldn't be a trash can without a nice beefy chunk of lead that sits in the bottom. Oh, and it has a tripod socket, which right now has the uh, flash mount screwed into it. Anyway, it's been fun if you watch my channel. You know, I love to shoot with well-engineered vintage equipment, but I'll also get a frame out of something that is just a lowly piece of junk. So I did that, and I'm on to the next camera. I'll see you then.